So welcome everybody to our webinar today on playground safety and supervision. Um, I was happy to see so many people that signed up for the webinar today. This is a very important topic, um, a topic that um, gets missed quite often um, because so many people perceive playground time as a break time um, for teachers um, and a time for the kids just to go out and play. Um, but it's such an important time because over 70% of all accidents, um, especially significant events, occur on the playground um, whenever the children are most physically active. You've got a combination of two things here. Children are more impulsive and they're more physically active and you have caregivers that have less supervision. Um, put the two together and you've got a disaster for a significant event. So we're going to talk about some techniques that we um, that we use to uh, to make sure that our playground is safe and that we are providing good supervision um, and of course an enjoyable time for the children. You know I've said this a lot in several of my trainings um, that you can really tell a lot about the quality and the integrity of a program just by looking at their playground. Um, and I want y'all to kind of do a homework assignment right here. And when you drive by other early education programs or even elementary schools, start paying close attention to their playgrounds and what's going on on the playground. Um, if you drive by in, in you know, the morning or the afternoons when children are outside playing and you drive by a playground and you see you know, a bunch of kids outside playing and all of the teachers huddled together um, talking with each other rather than interacting with the kids. Um, you know, what's your first impression of this program? You know, your first impression is that the teachers are not supervising the children. They're not interacting with the children. They're not engaged. They could care less what's going on with the kids. They're more concerned about what's going on with each other. And then you often think to yourself, if this is what goes on out on the playground, I wonder what goes on inside. You're gonna get a, a bad impression of the school, you're gonna continue driving and you're gonna move on. So let's say you go down the road and you get to the next place. Um, and then you see there's kids out on the playground, there's a teacher standing here, there's a teacher standing over here, there's a teacher standing over here, so they are zoned out and they're spread out, um, but again, what's wrong? There's no engagement. They're not interacting with the kids. They are zoned out, but a lot of times you'll see teachers do what I call the playground shuffle. And that's usually where they've got their arms crossed or their heads, their hands down in front of them and their head down, and they're just kind of shuffling along looking at the ground, okay? So again, no engagement, no interaction, no excitement. I'm probably going to drive on past this place too. And then I get to another center. And then I see kids outside on the playground. They're running, they're climbing, they're playing. But then I see the teachers that are out there. And one teacher has a group of children over at an art easel underneath the shade tree. And they're painting a picture on the art easel under the shade tree. And then I see another teacher over here with some scarves and a, and a radio and they're dancing to some music out on the playground. And then I see another teacher playing an, an activity and running around with the children. And you're like, wow, look at all these incredible things that are going on on the playground. And then think to yourself, if this is what goes on on the playground, imagine what goes on inside. That's an awesome program right there. And I want y'all to think about, you know, depending on where your program is located, how many people are able to see what goes on on the playground, cars that are passing by, people that are walking by, um, you know, depending on how your program is situated. You get a lot of a big audience out on the playground. All right, so you're always a, a billboard um, out there and people are watching you and people are listening to you. Main thing is we want, we want our children to be safe, okay? Now, let's say you drive by a playground and it's at night or on the weekends and there's no children on the playground. 
you can still tell a lot about the quality and the integrity of the school by what's going on after hours too. If you drive by a program and the toys are all left outside and the tricycles are flipped over and the trash can is flipped over and there's trash all over the playground or someone has tied a garbage bag to the fence and it's still flapping around in the wind and leaking water, what's your impression of this school? You know, how can they take care of children when they can't even take care of the toys or the trash on the playground? Again, it makes a big um, perception of the quality and integrity of the school. Um, but if you drive by that school at night or on the weekends and the playground is nice and cleaned up, all the tricycle or, uh, tricycles are lined up against the building, there's no trash on the playground, that's a program that takes care of their stuff. That's a program that ensures the safety of the children, even when the children are not there. Okay, that's a good program. So, you know, I always come back and I ask y'all, if I were to drive by your school this afternoon when your children are out there playing, what am I going to see? Am I going to see teachers that are engaged with the children, that are interacting with the children, that are playing with the children? Um, or am I going to see teachers that are all huddled together? Am I going to see any interaction um, with the kids or interactions with other staff members? Um, you know, if I drive by tonight or this weekend, am I going to see a clean, organized playground or am I going to see clutter? So, again, you can tell a whole lot. And I kind of start off with that analogy and that story because it puts everything kind of in perspective right there. All right, let's kind of move on um, on our little slide presentation and the things that we're going to talk about. You know, the, the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services requires all licensed facilities uh, to take children outside every day that weather permits, okay? For our infants, we must take children outside every day that weather permits. It's very important for our children zero through 17 months to get exposure to the sun. It's very important for them to get fresh air that is outside. Um, you know, imagine being in a fishbowl, and when you're in the fishbowl, you know, you have nothing but water in there. You never have an opportunity to get fresh air. You never have the opportunity to get nothing but what's in the fishbowl. That's what it's like for the infants and the other children in our programs whenever you keep them inside. The air gets stale. The air gets infected. You get germs. You get illnesses. And what's eventually going to happen? All the kids are going to get that, all right? And even as adults, we get stuck inside. We start getting cabin fever. We need to get outside. So even with your infants, licensing recognizes how important this is to get them outside every single day so that they can get out of the fishbowl. They can get fresh air. They can get the vitamins from the sun. They can get that exposure. Um, whether it's on a bye-bye buggy or a stroller or um, a caregiver taking turns carrying a child or two children outside. It doesn't have to be for a long period of time. You know, five or ten minutes is just fine um, if you have an opportunity to take them outside where it's shaded um, even better so that they don't get direct access from the sun, but they can still get the fresh air and the light. Um, so explore that within your organization and how it's going to work best for you. Now for our toddlers on up, so this is going to be children 18 months um, and up, child care licensing requires us to take these children outside twice a day um, when weather permits. So they need both morning and afternoon opportunities for outdoor play. Now, licensing does not determine the amount of time that you must take children outside. Each program gets to decide what works best for them. Um, same thing um, as far as weather permits. There's no definition for weather permits. It's going to be different for everybody. Um, and even if we were to look at everybody on this webinar right now, we're, we're all over the state of Texas. So, you know, 
what is weather permits and Amarillo is going to be totally different than weather permits in um, the Laredo, you know, or South Texas. Some people are used to higher temperatures, some people are not. Um, some programs are very blessed to have a lot of shade or shade structures. Um, so you're going to have the opportunity to go outside on sunny days and be able to play in the shade where some programs may not have any shade. You're going to have direct sunlight. So you get to determine what is weather permits based on your area of the state and what you have on your playground. Also, the way I do it in my schools um, is that our playground play is um, based on the, um, the heat index and the wind chill. So I don't actually look at temperature. I look at heat index and I look at wind chill. Um, and depending on the heat index um, that's outside, we normally will go outside for 30 minutes at a time. But when the heat index is high, we may only go out for 15 minutes, or we may only go out for 10 minutes, we may only go out for five minutes. Same thing with wind chill. So it's on a sliding scale. So the children are still getting the opportunity to get out of the fishbowl. They're still getting the opportunity to get outside. It's just for a reduced amount of time. Um, even in you know mid-July, August, when the temperatures are at the most extreme, Getting the children outside for as little as five minutes is going to be beneficial to you, your sanity, um, the children, and their health. All right. Um, so always keep that in mind. Something that I don't have in the slide presentation, but I thought I would go ahead and throw it out there, is that child care licensing does also state under illness exclusion that a child must not be admitted for care unless the child can comfortably participate in all program activities, including outdoor play. So if you were to have a situation where a parent came in and said, I don't want my child to go outside today, um, if the child is too ill to go outside, they are too ill to be admitted in your program. Um, and that is in minimum standards. It's not my rule, it's the state of Texas. I always like to have that ready and available for parents um, whenever this comes up right there. Um, you know, the other thing that I want y'all to look at from a standards and regulation standpoint, but also um, from developmentally appropriate practices, children are not getting enough physical development. Even in programs that offer physical development indoors, whether it's a gymnastics program or yoga or Pilates or physical games that you do in the classroom, we still need to promote physical activities outdoors, all right? Um, and we continue to see a lack of this um, all across the state of Texas and across the nation. And kind of think about it whenever we were kids. And when we were children, we played outside all the time. Um, and our children nowadays, they're just not getting enough of that outdoor play. They're not getting enough of the physical development that is needed to be successful, that is needed to, to, you know, to grow up and to connect the brain cells and to be productive members of society. Um, so that's something that we've all got to work on together. All right, let's talk about some supervision outside, um, some techniques that will help you out. Um, of course, I already mentioned that we want our teachers to spread out to all corners of the playground. Um, I used to even draw a map where I've been known to draw a map of the playground and say, okay, if there's one teacher out on the playground, you're going to position yourself in this general area. If there's two people out on the playground, one person's going to be here, one person's going to be here. If there's three people, one person here, one person here, one person here. Um, that way we've got all of the different corners and zones um, spread out. I encourage you all to have a staff meeting um, or, or some type of planning meeting within your organization and specifically talk about your playground and determine where your blind spots are. And this may take um, someone on this webinar or someone within your facility to crawl around the playground on your hands and knees. Look for those blind spots where you have restricted supervision. 
areas that children can get to that you're not going to be able to see them unless you're specifically in a certain area. Um, and whenever you determine where you're going to zone and where you're going to position yourself, always keep those blind spots into consideration. We typically have more blind spots on our playground than anywhere else in our program. So you need to be aware of where the children can get and you can't see them. Kids are smart and we all know that kids are very, very smart. They're going to find these blind spots and they're going to take advantage of them, especially those of you that work with older children. Okay, so um, I always encourage programs to document um, where the blind spots are and in your orientation, your new staff orientation or in your annual training, y'all constantly talk about these blind spots and how you're going to supervise them and how you're going to, to watch out for the children that may get into these areas. Okay. Um, in a situation that you are a single staff member um, covering the playground, you're the only person covering the playground, um, it's totally acceptable for you to only open up part of the playground so that you can maintain proper supervision. There's nothing that says the entire playground has to be open at all times. Um, you do want to position yourself somewhere closest to the door or the gate of the building, especially if any of y'all work um, on this webinar, um, you work with school age children. Um, position yourself closest to the door so that you can monitor who's coming in and who's going off the playground. A lot of times in the late afternoon, parents are really bad about coming and picking up children, just grabbing their kid and going and not signing them out or not having any communication with the teacher. And then the next thing you know, we're spending 45 minutes frantically looking for a child. All right. And, you know, long story short, they went home. Uh, so it's important that, that we have that area covered and, and you know, many of y'all have experienced that situation I just described right there. Um, we also, you know, we have kids that know how to open doors. We have kids that take it upon themselves to go inside. So you need to monitor that as well. All right. Again, if you have two people out on the playground, one person will be closest to the playground equipment, um, another person closest to the door or gate so that, again, you can monitor who's going in and out. From a risk management standpoint, um, never prop a door open. We see this happen quite often with chairs. Um, chairs or wooden blocks taken from the block center that people will prop a door open to get fresh air inside or to have access to a water fountain or whatever the excuse may be. This is a huge, huge um, risk um, to the children and to the property. Um, I can't tell you how many times we have seen significant events um, children that have had fingers cut off or fingers that have um, re or, uh, children that have received concussions from doors that were propped open that the wind caught it and knocked the, the door out from being propped or the chair slid out and a child had their fingers within the door frame or a child was standing in the area of the prop door and the door comes and pops them in the head or knocks them down or chops off the fingers. Um, the list goes on and on. Um, so please, please, please ask the, um, add this to your um, things of not to do on the playground, propping those doors open. I know that it seems so innocent um, and people get this mindset of that's never going to happen to me. But again, I've seen this happen so many times, doors propped open and a child's injured from it, okay? Um, and then of course, your ratios are always maintained at all times. Now, as far as childcare licensing is concerned, your normal um, classroom ratios are followed during outdoor time. There is no change in ratios whenever you are outdoors. Um, the only time that you would see a change in a ratio outdoors is um, if water play was involved. Um, so if water play was involved, we do see a reduction in ratios. Otherwise, it's normal classroom ratios outdoors. However, I strongly encourage 
programs that are able to run lower child staff ratios during outdoor times. If you are able to make that happen, it's always a better thing to do. Um, I also, from a risk management standpoint, encourage programs to try to manipulate it to where there's at least two adults on the playground at all time. And that may mean that two classrooms go out at the same time so that you do have two adults out there. Um, but we've got, we've got to not only look at the safety of the children, but we have to look at the safety of the caregiver as well. And I have had situations where teachers have passed out on the playground um, or have been knocked out on the playground. And if you're the only one out there, now you've got a group of children that are unsupervised and a teacher down on the ground. Um, so we've got to look at all parties right there. Okay? Now that is if you can manipulate it. Now, as far as taking multiple classrooms out on your playground at one time, it's going to come down to the square footage of your playground um, and how many children you can have out there. So you'll want to look into that and refer to minimum standards. Um, but like I said, sometimes the more adults, the more eyes, um, the better off. We don't want to overflow the playground with children, but whatever we can do to get at least two adults out there, I personally think is the best thing. All right, um, I put on here, you know, what outside time is not. All right, it's not a break time for staff. We don't want to open the playground door and say, all right, kids, run, run, go, get out of my hair. All right, leave me alone, leave me alone. All right, it's not a break time for staff. Now, this is a time where you should be supervising the most. This is the time that you should be interacting the most. Um, this is a great time for you to build that relationship with the child, to interact with the child, to build trust and respect with the child. They're gonna really appreciate the time that you spend with them out on the playground. Um, all right, so yeah, we, we just got a comment that, that uh, someone is under ratio due to small center, so my outdoor time is big on square feet. Um, um, so, so yeah, um, so yeah, so don't want to take this as a break time. It's not a time to just have the kid, the kids blow off energy, you know, run, run, run. Um, forcing the children to run could be perceived as abuse and neglect. So we want to be careful with that. Um, I worked with a center one time um, that was in a lot of trouble with licensing for forcing the children to run laps when they misbehaved. Um, and licensing got brought into it and it was not a pretty situation. So even though we want the children to blow off their energy, you can't force that on them as well. And of course, taking your lesson plans um, outside, working on your lesson plans should never be allowed. You should be 100% focused on the children and their safety. Um, I want y'all to keep in mind the laws of gravity. What goes up must eventually come down. So when children are outside and they're climbing, whether they're climbing up a ladder to slide down a slide, they're climbing up playground equipment, laws of gravity come into effect. What goes up must eventually come down. You need to be within three to four feet of anything that leaves the ground um, so that you can properly supervise that. Now, if you've got 18 kids out on the playground, you know, are you gonna be able to be within three to four feet of every single child as they're playing on equipment? Of course not, all right, of course not. But I want you to imagine what a situation would look like if you were in a courtroom um, and a child was severely injured on your playground. Um, if you, if, if the lawyers and the judge are asking you, you know, what were you doing when this child was severely injured? If you reply, well, I was sitting over at the bench with the other teachers talking about the barbecue on Saturday, you know, it's not going to look too good for you. We'll see you in about 10 to 20 years when you get out of prison. All right. Um, but if you tell the judge and the jury and the lawyer, look, I was standing within four feet of this child and interacting with them and playing with them and they just fell down and they broke their ankle. You know, um, even though the, the child was severely injured, you were right there. You were get engaged. You were interacting. You're going to be a lot better off. 
all right, you're probably going to be in good shape in that situation. Okay, so I hope that y'all kind of saw the difference right there. All right, let's kind of talk about interactions whenever you're outside. Um, I get really excited about this topic because, um, you know, one of our primary duties as a caregiver is to build relationships with the children and to, like I said, build trust and respect um, and, the and the gratitude of time spending with them and especially developing their emotional and their social skills. And people underestimate the power of playground time and outdoor time and how children are more willing to build positive relationships with us whenever we're outside in a physical environment rather being enclosed in a classroom all right the chances of building that lifelong relationship is less whenever you're in the classroom other than whenever you're outside there's a lot of different reasons for this, whether it's the physical impulsiveness, the openness of the child. Um, they're a lot more willing to share whenever they're outside in this environment. So we don't want to neglect the opportunity that's being given to us. All right. Make sure that you have quality, positive interactions whenever you're out on the playground. And remember, there's something about the playground that your interactions and your tone of voice is magnified whenever you're out there. You can be talking in a normal, typical tone of voice, and people that don't normally hear you can hear you when you're outside. Um, and those directors that are on the webinar with me today, y'all understand and y'all been there you know that you've got a good quality teacher out on the playground interacting with the kids and it never fails someone will call the school saying your teachers are yelling and screaming at the kids outside and you know that's not the case no one is yelling or screaming at the kids it's just that those interactions and those conversations are magnified whenever you're out there so be very very careful and aware of that um, that you are watching your tone of voice and you are watching your fluctuation and that you are keeping it positive. Even when you need to redirect the child and you need to keep the child safe, you can do it with an appropriate tone and with appropriate body language rather than getting yourself all huffy and puffy and veins popping out of your neck and your forehead and screaming at the kids. All right. Even during lineup time, whenever it's time to bring the kids all together and time to bring them indoors, watch your tone, okay? If you can have a little bell or a whistle or a special clap that the children are aware that it's time to come inside, that might reduce the risk of someone um, perceiving your interactions to be negative when you intend for them to be positive. Um, of course, make sure that you manage yourself and that you have age-appropriate conversations with the children, um, making sure that we're not saying things that we shouldn't say, using language that we shouldn't use around children, um, co comments or sarcasm um, shouldn't be used with children. And for some strange reason, um, I've had more conversations with staff members about inappropriate conversations with kids outdoors than I have with, you know, conversations with kids indoors. So um, I guess the, the, you know, being free and being outside and being in that open area, not only is it, you know, make the children want to be more open and accepting, but adults seem to be more open um, as well. So make sure that we are having those appropriate conversations. Now, I will tell you one of the main reasons why I put this on the slide presentation today is because usually when two adults or three adults start talking to each other on the playground, that's when the conversation becomes inappropriate and you've got children that are listening to everything that's being said. Um, sometimes you may not think they can hear you, but trust me, they can hear you. Um, interactions, you know, they never stop. They're ongoing. This is such an awesome time for you to be, um, in, you know, talking to the children, encouraging the children, motivating the children to, to run and to climb and, and to really focus on that physical development, that large muscle development. 
Um, you know, we talk about social and emotional skills, um, building friendships, fostering friendships, um, getting children to believe in themselves, um, getting children to believe in their abilities, and the playground is the perfect opportunity for you to do this. And I say this all the time in many of my trainings, interactions and supervision go hand in hand, all right? You cannot have quality supervision unless you have quality interactions. You can't have quality interactions unless you have quality supervision. They go together. The more you interact with the children, the more you foster their self-esteem, the more trust and respect you build, the better your supervision will be. Children are less likely to get into a supervision incident whenever they're having fun with their teacher and they care and they respect their teacher. All right, supervision incidents happen when children feel left out. All right, so don't leave anyone out, okay? You want to constantly interact. Like I said, they never stop. They're ongoing. You're including everybody. All right, so you should be a busy, busy little, little beaver whenever you're out on the playground. Um, interactions, again, they should be productive. They should be educational. We're going to talk about key experiences. We're going to talk about motor development. We're going to talk about communication. We're going to be using some of the words that we're adding to our word walls as we're climbing and as we're jumping and we're defining some of the activities that we're doing. Um, we're going to talk about what they're learning, what they're enjoying, what they're not enjoying. We're going to talk about why they're successful, why they're not successful. Again, so many incredible conversations that you're going to have um, when you're out there on the playground. Um, and again, remember, you are a billboard for your program, and people are watching you when you're out on that playground. Your best interaction should be taking place whenever you're out there. All right. Um, very good. Very good. Let's go on over to our next slide right here. A safe environment for your playground. Um, when taking children outdoors, always make sure that the equipment that they are playing on um, is age appropriate for them. Look at the restrictions before you go outside. You never want to take children outside to a piece of equipment that is not appropriate for their age. All right, again, from a risk management standpoint, that one is huge, huge, huge. All right, I would rather you take the children to an open field where they do nothing but run than to take them to a piece of equipment that is not appropriate for their age. All right, um, when you're planning activities, again, you want to keep in mind the children's um, age and development. And don't just look at the playground equipment. You're going to look at tricycles. You're going to look at helmets. You're going to look at balls. You're going to look at, you know, the, the parachute, the bubbles that you take outside. Any and everything that you take out to engage the children, pay close attention to the age restrictions. Um, that, you know, b between age restrictions and supervision are the two biggest parts of playground safety and keeping children safe, all right? Nine times out of 10, when we see children that are severely injured on the playground, it is due to um, inappropriate equipment that is not appropriate for that child's age, okay? Um, we see it so, so often. Have this discussion um, as a team in your program, um, the equipment that you have at your school and who it's designed for. I know most locations, um, we have separate playgrounds for separate age groups. We have a toddler playground. We have a two-year-old playground. We have a preschool or a school-age playground. Those are separated for a reason, it's, and it's because of the age appropriateness. Um, if it's too muddy to go out on the preschool classroom, uh, pre preschool uh, playground, don't take it upon yourself to take the kids to the toddler playground, all right? A big mistake that people make is they think that age restrictions are from like the lower age and up. So like the toddler playground is designed for children 18 months through three years. 
all right? So it's pretty obvious we don't take the toddlers and twos out to the preschool playground because that equipment is too big. But you also should not be taking those three to five year olds to the toddler playground that is designed for 18 months to three years because now that playground equipment is too small and you can get just as injured on equipment that is too small than you can playground equipment that is too big, okay? So you gotta follow it exactly as written. And the last tip that I have for a safe outdoor uh, play situation is that teachers must be excited about being outside and they must have a positive attitude whenever they are outside with the children and playing on the playground. You would be surprised when it comes to safety and supervision how your attitude is a key player here. Teachers that have a positive attitude, teachers that are excited to be outside, teachers that make the most of outdoor play is less likely to have an incident. Incidents normally happen when teachers or caregivers go outside and they're in a bad mood because they don't want to be out there um, for whatever reason. They're tired. They don't like being in the sun, you know, whatever the excuse may be. Whenever you don't have that positive attitude, when you've got a negative attitude about playground time, you're going to have an incident. I guarantee it. Okay? You've got to have that positive attitude. And when you've got a positive attitude and when you're excited, guess what? It's contagious. The kids are excited about going outside. They're excited about getting their professional development. And it's just going to continue to, to go on and on and on. And then whenever they get excited about going outside on your playground and getting their physical development and having nice play, a uh, safe play on your playground, guess what? When they go home and at night and on the weekend, they're going to be excited about going outside and playing with mom and dad or their guardians outside at home um, as well. So it starts right here with us, but you've got to have that positive attitude, okay? Um, so anyways, and then of course the last thing right here, the teacher's role um, on playground safety and supervision. Um, we want to facilitate play and learning while ensuring safety. Um, some of the best ideas that we come up with on the playground don't come from the teacher. It comes from the kids. This is an opportunity where their imagination just runs wild. They come up with all kinds of crazy ideas and suggestions. Um, you being a high quality teacher, you take those ideas and you run with it, all right? Don't judge their ideas. Don't say, oh, that's silly. Oh, we're not going to do that, you know? No, I mean, listen to what they have to say. They can come up with some great stuff. And especially when we talk about earning tr uh, trust and respect, this is a great way of doing it right there. Um, keep in mind cultural um, you know, things and, and, and environment. So is your outdoor play area enhanced to connect to culture and environment? Um, we want to adapt to all of the children that we have in our programs. Um, I love creating an outdoor classroom. Um, and designing a playground that you have the nine learning centers that you normally would have in your classroom. So in art, music, science, language, math, um, you know, dress up, home center, um, you know, a theater center, but doing it all outside in addition to in the classroom. And you see such a big difference in your interactions um, and your excitement about outdoor play um, whenever you have some of these learning centers. And if you don't have the ability to create a drama center um, and a, manipulat a manipulative center and an art center and a music center all at the same time on your playground, take it one at a time. You know, take it one at a time. And, and if you have to use prop boxes or buckets that you can take dramatic play outside for one week and then switch it out. The week after that, you take music outside with homemade musical instruments that the children can play and march and put on a concert outside. And then the next week, you take a science bucket 
and you do science experiments outside. Um, you do some bug collecting with gloves and, and tongs. Um, you know, you do circle time outside under a shade tree, um, taking children out with a basket of books. Um, you know, so many different things that you can do outside rather than in the classroom and you have such a big difference right there. Um, so always keep that in mind too. I have a, a book that I wrote several years ago. Some of you probably have a copy of it. Um, if not, you can get it on my website on taking curriculum outdoors. Um, and we have over 50 activities that you can do out on your playground. And the first part of that are um, activities that you normally do in the classroom that you can take outside and you get again such a big um, a big difference right there all right so in conclusion on our webinar just a couple of things that I want to follow up on um, your attentiveness your excitement your attitude is what's going to make your playground safe all right the supervision of the children on your playground, when you're aware and when you're engaged, you're going to have good supervision. Avoid distractions um, while you're out on the playground. Common distractions that prevent children from being supervised on the playground, other teachers, all right? Administrators pulling your attention away from the playground. Uh, performing other duties such as lesson planning, um, that's going to take your attention away. So again, as a program, have a staff meeting. Okay, I want all of y'all to collaborate and come up with what are our internal distractions that prevent us from properly supervising the children on the playground and then see what you can do about those internal distractions. You know, take a, a team approach right there, and when everyone comes together with the conclusion that teachers should not be interacting with each other about personal affairs when we're outside on the playground, that is a distraction to supervision. When you come to that conclusion as a team, everyone's going to buy into it, all right? And of course, the personal use of electronic devices, cell phones should not be used out on the playground. That's one of the biggest distractions that we have um, in our early education program. So I would avoid having those cell phones out there. All right, if you need to know what time it is, go buy a clock and mount the clock on the wall of the building. That way you don't have to rely on your cell phone to know what time it is, all right? You can get those at, at any um, home improvement store or any department store. You can get an outdoor clock, outdoor clock that is weatherproof, um, so you won't need that cell phone to know what time it is. Um, or you can go buy a watch. Watches work really good too. All right, so avoid those distractions, stay focused on the children and maintain that safe environment and you will have a successful playground experience. Do I have any questions um, while we're on the webinar before we close out here today? This was a um, good conversations, I think. All right. Fantastic. Well, I sure appreciate everyone participating in today's webinar. I look forward to seeing y'all next week and many weeks to come. Have a wonderful rest of your week. All right. Thank you very much.